Welcome back, everyone. I'm Linda Tupin, and this is Common Sense Choices. I can't believe it, you guys, but this is actually our seventh episode. You and I have been together for the past two months, and I've absolutely loved getting to know so many of you in the comments section, both on YouTube and on Facebook and on Instagram. So thank you guys for your loyalty and for supporting this. And it has been an absolute joy for me, and it's only getting better. Well, just to recap real quickly, just so you know the rules of the game, children, the rules of the game are... Every time you comment and every time you share, your name goes into a drawing for a special gift every single week from my little store over at lindatupin.com. Tupin is T as in Thomas, O-U, P as in Peter, I-N. I've only said that five million times in my life, lindatupin.com. And there's a cute little store over there called Stuff I Didn't Know I Needed. And you'll get a beautiful gift from over there. And by the way, you guys, this week I took our t-shirt and I actually had them make it in a really, really soft, light, bright pink. Okay, there was a salmon color, but it's a little bit brighter. So you might want to check that out. And of course, I'm already here with my coffee cup this morning uh, with our mantra. And so let's start by saying our mantra together. You see it in the background over here on a seven foot piece of art. It is the foundation for everything that we're doing. So say it with me. I am where I am by the choices I have made or I have allowed others to make for me. I am where I am by the choices I've made or I've allowed others to make for me. It is all about personal responsibility and taking control of our life. And so some of you may be listening on Apple or Spotify, so you might be driving to work. So hands on the wheel, nine and two, eyes straight ahead and enjoy the journey. For those of you who are watching on YouTube and Facebook, Instagram and various other places, welcome. I love spending this time with you, and it's just a wonderful place for us to hang out. Well, I do want to announce our winner from last week. Our guest speaker was a yoga champion and a personal friend of mine, Glenn Brown, and our winner last week was Carrie Ann. And Carrie, I will be contacting you, and we will be shipping off something wonderful to you in the mail. So congratulations to you. Now, If you haven't already, go over to lindatupin.com and click the sign up button. And what that does is that allows you to receive all our episodes in email. And then about every two weeks, I do a little cross check with your text. And we always catch those people who didn't do the second step. It's a two-step security system. You probably have noticed that in a lot of things that you're signing up for these days. So you say, hey, I want to receive information from Linda on email but we send you an email that has to be clicked, okay? (laughs) And so if you skip that, then you don't get the email. So make sure that you look for that and then you'll get all the episodes every single week just emailed to you. Well, just to recap really quickly, we started out the podcast in December dealing with mental health. Obviously, there's a lot to unpack there, especially in the age of COVID. And so if you didn't catch those episodes, they are absolutely wonderful, well-received, including psychotherapist Pat Pearson. So please be sure to check out all of that information over on YouTube. Now, in the month of January, we are dealing with physical health. And we started out the month with my Dr. Lena Edwards, who you have heard me talk about for a million years. And she talked about the 10 things that you can do to improve your natural immunity. If you miss that, please be sure to catch that one. And then last week, I brought in my personal friend, the person who I worked with with yoga in the very, very beginning, Glenn Brown. And he is also internationally ranked and a U.S. champion. And he talked about the importance of your exercise routine. And he just brought out some brilliant points, you guys, really wonderful points about, it's not about the class you sign up, it's about making it fit into your schedule that feels right for your soul. He talked about uh, the whole concept of yoga and where it came from and and the physiology of it. So you're going to love his episode, you guys. So be sure and check it out. So as I finished up the month of January, I made a list. I thought, okay, I want to bring in just a friend, someone who actually has practiced all the things that we have talked about. And that practice of health and wellness and exercise and just making it part of your lifestyle. And the first person that came to my mind 
uh, was my friend Pamela Shaw. And I cannot wait for you guys to meet her, but I'm going to start by introducing her with her professional accolades, and I'll tell you a personal story about her when we bring her on screen. But Pamela Wadrock Shaw is actually a native of Kentucky, and she grew up in a rural part of the state about two, two and a half hours south of me, right now southwest of me. She was a middle child. Well, we know about those middle children, don't we? Uh, and she was born to educator parents. She pursued higher education and graduated from the University of Kentucky with a bachelor's degree in English, a minor in dance, and certified to teach high school. Now, during college summer break, she worked in interpretation at Mammoth Cave National Park. So I have a story for you about that in just a second. And upon college graduation, she moved to Fort Lauderdale, Florida, where she taught high school at the Broward County School System for five years. And in addition to teaching American literature and research, she coached the drill team, the dance team, the cheerleaders. I'm tired already, Pam. And she choreographed the school musicals. Pam opened the doors to her own direct selling business part-time in 1986, that was actually just four years after I started my in-home business while teaching, and I was teaching. So you can see the connection here. Anyway, and she went on to build an international organization over the past 35 years and her passion, and you will see her passion come through today for sure, for speaking and teaching and writing has opened so many doors for her in both the Christian and the corporate worlds. Her branded message, design your life. See how beautifully that marries to I am where I am by the choices I've made. Design your life. Um, is really built from the ups and downs of her own personal journey in a quest to maximize all that God has in store for her. And doesn't that just fill your heart with joy that God has something great in store for each and every person listening to this today? And to also um, is highly motivated to spread this message to any and all, teaching others to find and live their true identity, to design their lives and live out their vision for that life. She authored the 90 Day Planner. There's mine. To design your life and live that vision. Anyway, so she also designed the planner with a breakthrough goal setting workbook a tool designed to draw out your inner dreams, your inner desires, your needed habits, and your boundaries, along with a prayer journal for morning meditation and a healthy, quiet time discovery. And we'll definitely pop that up uh, here several times during the podcast today so that you see that and tell you where you can get that. In 1999, Pam was awarded the American Businesswoman's Association Hilltopper Chapter Businesswoman of the Year. She served on the advisory board for the National Women's Ministry Association, a branch of ministry for women out of the Enjoy with Dr. John Maxwell. Many of you know and love John Maxwell. Uh, and Pam also was privileged to share the stage with Dr. Maxwell at two different leadership conferences. Pam lost her spouse, Jerry, who is a personal friend of mine as well, lost him to ALS 15 years ago. She is the mother to Thomas, their 27-year-old son. She is also acclaimed by her high school as the first ever Distinguished Alumni Award. Pam still resides in Kentucky near her childhood town in Bowling Green, Kentucky. You can find Pam on Instagram at Pamela Shaw at Instagram 90 Day Planner, on YouTube, Pamela Shaw, and you can visit her website, PamelaShaw.pink. Will you all please welcome you guys, I can hear you applauding in the background, my friend Pam. Oh, Linda, good morning. And listen, congratulations on your podcast. The theme, the branding common sense choices, your guests, it's such an authentic expression and platform for who you truly are. And I celebrate your choice, sister, the impact that you're having and really great anticipation and excited to just keep learning myself and watching the podcast grow. So congratulations. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you for giving of your time today because I believe Pamela Shaw taught me in my life that time spent one, where, one place is time spent away from something else. <laughs> And you chose to spend time with me and hopefully tens of thousands of other people who are listening today. It's all a choice. Well, I have to tell my viewers, uh, my, my first interaction 
where Pam Shaw became like my real good friend. So you have to know, you have to understand she was from Florida. I am from Kentucky. That's a world of difference culturally, but I didn't know she was from Kentucky. I just knew she was this hot shot uh, person down in Florida doing big things with her life. And, and uh, it was about 1994 when, you know, this is in the days where if you wanted to talk to somebody, you had to pick up the phone or you had to mail them something or you had to get in the yep. car and drive. So there was yep. no technology and there was no internet. And I found this little company called Voicetel that allowed you to record a message and then all the people in your organization could listen to your message, which was groundbreaking. It was unbelievably groundbreaking. And so when I discovered it, I, I knew that Pam had moved back from Florida to live near where she was raised with her family. And she invited me to Mammoth Cave State Park. Now, Pam, you might not know this, but I really don't like caves, but she insisted that we do it. <laughs> she had been a tour guide at Mammoth Cave State Park. And I was like, okay. And it was fun and all wonderful, but here's what won me over, Pam. We went to lunch at Mammoth Cave at the state park and all the stuff on the menu, you ordered soup beans and collard greens. Yes. And I thought, I think she can be my friend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so, I remember that day. Thomas was little. You carried him through most of the cave and Katie was not happy about being there. <laughs> I remember that day, but it was a, it was a great day for us. I remember it like it was yesterday. <laughs> so Pam, we have a, a before and after picture from 20 years ago that we're going to throw up right now. Oh, and boy. I would never say that Pam Shaw was out of shape or not healthy. But there is a huge difference between the two pictures that are on the screen right now. And I've known both of those people because I've known you for over 20 years. <laughs> I've watched the transformation happen. So tell us the story, your eye story, if you will, of your health and wellness journey. Sure, sure. Well, and I'm first to note, I should be okay. taking notes. <laughs> Okay. Well, first it's a disclaimer. I am a layperson wellness enthusiast, right? My knowledge is from aggressive interest and self-education. Um, I grew up in the 60s, Linda, we did. And at that time we had three recommended childhood vaccines and penicillin for bacterial infection. That's pretty much it. But in the small town of 500 that I grew up in, there was a young third generation chiropractor and my parents respected him. And so for any flu bug or common cold or virus we caught, injury, foot, planter's wart from dance, strep throat, you name it, we went to Dr. Houchin. And I learned early on that early treatment at the sign of a symptom meant shortening the lifespan of a bug. And as a child, I learned to mega dose with vitamin C probiotics that also had zinc and micronutrients in it. And so today I add, you know, vitamin D, magnesium, quercetin, NAD to those early treatments. But the amount of antibiotics I had as a kid was minuscule. Um, one, I think and now as an adult, I'm looking back one because the 45 minute trip to Bowling Green plus my hatred of a shot in my rear end <laughs> and the smell of Dr. McElvoy, who is our pediatrician, we did have one of his office, plus my parents' busy schedule just landed us more often than not at Dr. Houchin for an adjustment, a reminder to supplement, sleep, drink water, avoid sugar, soft drinks, or orange juice unless it was diluted. Um, so as a young teen and young adult, I still regularly visited Dr. Houchin. When I was pregnant, I came home from Florida to get an adjustment from Dr. Houchin. I would call him from college. Um, and, you know, years ago, maybe 20, I had a suspicious mammogram and I and they rushed me to a sonogram and then they were going to do a needle biopsy. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. So I, I went to Dr. Houchin and I didn't tell him what I'd experienced. I just said, instead of doing my OB appointments this year, would you run your magnet diagnostics on me? And he said, sure. And he goes, everything goes, everything's okay. Go, oh, well, you might have something going on with that left one. I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, well, it's not cancer because that's what I was being led to believe, you know, at the medical center, like I was in there, a cancer, you know, crisis. And so he said, you're probably low on um, iodine. And he shared with me a, a physician he had been following the, that was mega dosing uh, breast, four stage breast cancer and healing with iodine. So I did exactly what he said. And uh, six weeks later, I went back to retest with him. He goes, you're good to go. Went back and had a follow up mammogram. And they said, what did you do? And so um, 
he has been, he was a life force in my education. We lost Dr. Houchins five, six years ago, a year after my dad. It was an epic loss in my life. And I had just gotten his okay to do some recordings about his life and his most interesting case study, something we always talked about when I would go in for an adjustment. I was curious, you know, what child have you healed? What, you know, what's the most interesting thing you've done this past month? And so I go through all of that to establish my bend in medicine and healing has always been root cause, inside out healing versus outside in medicine. Um, I can recall my dad bringing a voice to the side effects of harmful pharmaceuticals that would invariably drive another prescription. You know, one would require another, one that would require another, and how that cycle of appeal to heal would never be an ending pathway, and we just didn't want to travel down. And although we didn't have a TV until I was 14, I don't know if you knew that about us or not. My mom used to call it the idiot box. I wish she still believed it was the idiot box. <laughs> we didn't have one until I was 14. But I can remember the first season of life, I heard commercials for drugs and pharmaceutical where there was like happy music music and butterflies on the screen with all the warnings, you know, in the background, this may cause dizziness, permanent blindness, heart, the desire to end your life, shortness of breath. And I guess that's called informed consent. But, you know, people still see the butterflies in the music. And I see an opportunity to do an honest check in on how am I living in a spirit of wellness from sleep to food to thinking and stress to exercise to connection and purpose. And I guess that's the foundation that formulated my thinking for all that I've built on. You know, functional medicine, integrative health, Dr. Houchin, although a highly educated and experienced chiropractor, he was a DC, he was a masterful diagnostician and he had to fight the allopathic craze, government regulations and validation as a physician. So as a kid, I was super active. No TV, we played outdoors, we had chores, we walked, we rode our bicycles, we built forts, we waded in creeks, uh, we played softball in neighborhood yards around my small town. The only organized sport was boys' little league baseball. And so my parents enrolled us in dance when they went for their rank one in education and master so that we'd have something to do while they were in class in Bowling Green, 45 minutes from home. But this turned into a passion and became a part of my life for a really long time. Uh, I took an occasional gymnastics class and starting in sixth grade, cheerleading became my sport. There weren't gyms. There was no weightlifting. It was high school, uh, you know, before jogging became something people did. So I started jogging a mile uh, a few days a week and I was a, a food product of the 80s, the low fat craze. Um, again, government supported. And I couldn't understand why I was getting so fat eating low fat. <laughs> of course, we've educated ourselves out of that insanity. Fast forward, um, I met my husband, the late Jerry Shaw in South Florida at a triathlon. Um, he and his family were hardcore into cycling and triathlon races, and he would played college football at the University of Florida, where my son has his SEC championship ring. So as we dated sports, golf, um, his dad played on the PGA Tour, an active lifestyle became our lifestyle. Um, in my late 20s, I was tuned into not feeling as healthy or energetic or as indestructible. And Jerry's family had seen an applied kinesiologist in Boca Raton, Florida. So I went to see him and he was the first person I heard utter the phrase, eat clean. And he suggested that my adrenals were fatigued and um, and he gave me an adjustment, which was different from my adjustment from Dr. Houchins. But he also gave me some supplements and he told me to eat clean. I'm like, I don't even what does that mean? So we attended a couple of his workshops to even know what that means, because for those of you lost, eating clean means if it is called food, but it didn't grow out of the ground, fly in the air, swim in the ocean, or have a mother, it's probably not something your body can fully utilize or bring life to your body. So fast forward. I gained 85 pounds with the pregnancy of our only son. Jerry gained about 30. <laughs> we left South Florida for Kentucky to be closer to my family. And then, um, you know, Four Seasons was a first experience for him. Linda, you would have loved seeing him the first spring when little lime green buds started coming back on the trees. He thought they were dead for sure. Uh, but the Four Seasons and winter, I love to bake. We all love to eat. We were really careful of Thomas's first two to three year nutrition, including sugar free. We went down a slippery slope though to slow weight gain and inflammation. Um, Jerry had allergies um, from Kentucky living, ragweed, goldenrod and the like, and he was a huge consumer of Diet Coke. 
And from time to time, you know, we would diet, we would cut back on sweets, we would increase exercise. I read a lot of books, but one that resonated with me for us both was Eat Right for Your Type. And it's a book by Drs. Diadamo, husband and wife, about what your blood type is and how when it evolved into society, what society was uh, doing at that time. I'm a positive. And so when, when a positive evolved into society, they were agrarian. So I'm more naturally a vegetarian. I brought this before Dr. Houch and he said, yeah, it's about right. You know, nothing is 100 percent, but that there's something definitely to that. So Jerry and I kept stabbing at health. Uh, neither of us were on, on any pharmaceuticals or with any condition. But one day, um, and you remember this, in 2005, he opened his mouth and spoke with a slur in April of 2005. And for six months, it worsened, as did his ability to swallow. And ultimately, he was diagnosed with ALS. And he passed 19 months from his first symptom. It was terrible. It was undignified, a horrid decline, a man who had been Superman to under 100 pounds at his passing. And for me, grief was hard and it was stressful. And as a widow and single mom of a 12 year old boy, who there's just, you know, there's so much in that window. You journeyed with me, but I knew I needed to get healthy emotionally, physically. I knew I couldn't do this life of widow, single mom any other way. I knew God was with me, uh, growing me, speaking to me. I knew I had to take a different action. And the one year anniversary of his death, I was fiercely obedient. I knew that some choices had contributed to the unknowns of ALS. Um, his blood, hair and urine analysis report showed a lot of metals, a lot of toxicity a lot of inflammation, um, which near the end, he tried to chelate. We both had our mercury amalgams removed. Um, he had taken his childhood vaccines three to four times because they kept losing the papers. And in order to play sports, he had to have them. It wasn't the technology that we have today. I tested my own metals and some of them were high. So I chelated those through a Nashville uh, medical doctor who practices functionally. I removed sugar from all my nutrition altogether. And that was the one whisper that I knew God had continued to tell me to get rid of sugar. But I finally removed sugar altogether and started exercising. Nothing like what I do today. Um, I didn't know what to do, if you believe it or not. You know, I couldn't remember what to do. So I'd walk around my house and up and down the stairs of each floor for 20 minutes. Literally, I would just walk for 20 minutes. I would do a few push-ups and call it a workout. I still people, uh, I teach people who are just starting to lay your clothes out at night, appropriate for the weather, and then put them on before you even pee in the morning, and then go out the door and walk 10 minutes in one direction, turn around and walk back. 20 minutes is a good effort. If you want to take it up a notch, every minute, change it up. Walk, walk fast, jog, sprint, and then do that three times in one direction and three times back. Um, in 2009, I went to a gym called The Yard locally, mostly for my son and his friend to train for track. I offered to pay if they would go. And then I got hooked and I've been in the gym with a trainer four to five days a week since then. Um, my food journey has continued with greater knowledge, education and practice. Um, without integration, knowledge is just information. And so today for me, it's always considering from a root perspective based on way old science. The, the truth is this, your gut equals your brain health long term, your gut and your brain are connected. And so um, a healthy immune system working to reduce stress, reduce inflammation, low exposure to radiation and EMF. I just started taking my Apple Watch off at night. I've moved the, my cell phone across the room. I got an old school um, Iron Man just so if I need to see the time in the middle of the night. But since I've made those two changes, I haven't even awakened in the middle of the night. Um, I do proper supplementation where foods and soil, you know, they're grown in lack, keeping my body fat low, keeping my muscle high and really looking at health from a cellular level. OK, so let me pause there and, and just say, you know, are you with me or is there something that makes you want me to backtrack on or, you know, where do you think your listeners are? I, I'm, I'm living this as you're talking because I've seen all of this. I, I remember all the conversations that we have had as friends with our friend groups. I mean, like I've heard all of this as it developed. And I, I think that's one thing that I would want my viewers to to hear what you heard her say was that was not today she made a decision tomorrow things started happening this is a process that will last for the rest of your life this is a life 
change. And I loved about the gut and the brain. Uh, Dr. Edwards, a couple of weeks ago, you know, talked about the immune system is between your mouth and your rectum. It's all about what you put in your body, in your, in your uh, food. It's all about food. And yeah. uh, so all of this is con constantly building on each thing. So everything that you said, and, and this was not in our conversation before, you know, I'm, I'm sure that the past two years has been very, very hard on you because nobody seems to be looking at roots. And so, and I'm going to throw this question at you totally unprepared is mentally, because I spent four months, four weeks on mental health, mentally, how did you cope with the past two years, especially when a lot of this was going against everything you know and believe to be true? Yeah, How did you yeah it's been, well, it has been a challenge. And um, I think that the biggest challenge is in finding a way not to judge and feel um, superior because I know what I know what I know. And when the narrative and the mainstream narrative goes against what you know that you know, then you find yourself in um, conflict with relationships who don't know what you know and who haven't lived what you know. And so, Linda, it's been a really interesting time to just be introspective. I have dug in and listen, I've got about 500 hours studying COVID viruses, the vax. I mean, I just I, I pulled on my learner and I jumped back in. And so where there are brilliant doctors, epidemiologists, virologists, um, uh, vaccine developers who are on um, this wave of thinking and who have data and and who got censored and silenced, I followed them. You know, they were in they were in pain because they've been, you know, experts in their field all these years and all of a sudden they had no voice. So I found those voices for validation and education and learning. And um, because my habits were so ingrained, when the gym closed, I had a gym upstairs. So I got on Facebook Live with a few of my gym rat buddies and we did workouts that other people could join in on. So I just created more of, of doing what I do, you know, being vigilant in my private choices and sharing, you know, with other people who might want to jump in along the way. As, as hard as the past two years has been, I'm starting to see truth unfold, you know, truth come out. And so there's something validating about that. But in my own ego, I also have to watch not to be like, you know, no, 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 boo hoo, just to be like, you know, grateful that truth will come out and that people are learning and to stay humble in, you know, God brought me to this place for this time. And so I'm still learning. I don't know it all, but I know that there are people around me who are so much more brilliant. I mean, virologists, for example, virologists, what they do all day long and for years and in the history of viruses following them gave me so much gratitude for Dr. Houchin. Um, because right. I knew from him, viruses take two years to exit a population. Well, so I said, back a hundred years, right? I said, it's gonna take two years. <laughs> You know, it's very interesting. I was so thankful for a my friendship with you, uh, because you said in the first week she you said we we're like okay, how long is this fifteen day thing going to last? You goes this is two years. We'll yeah. be doing this for two years because that's how long a virus takes to get through society. And at the same time, you were in my head um, uh, a person in my life that I love dearly, it, who is also in the medical field. The first thing I heard when COVID hit was everybody will get this yeah everybody will get this this it, yeah. a virus is cannot be stopped so everybody will get it and he said to me would you rather get it now or three years later when you're older and 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 your body is perhaps weaker and it's interesting that that was such a simple little sentence but it shaped how i viewed it so i didn't view it as scary i didn't view it as anything but man, I have got to do everything in my power to get as healthy as I can. So when it hits me, because it will hit me, and it did hit me uh, yep. back in September, that my body could handle it. And right. so your voice all along, like people is, you know, I've, I've been, I probably haven't been as graceful as you on social media. I probably have like said more than one time, I told you so. I told you so. <laughs> yeah. I am. Okay, let's get back on track here. Uh, advice to my followers they're like okay i'm ready okay yeah. i I'm, I'm not going to just start a fad diet i really want to be smart about this and i want to make this a life change can you give us some simple practical things that they can do 
Absolutely. I think most people, when they know better, they do better. They just don't know what to know. And there's so much information. So the first thing you have to do is to assess honestly where you are in your health. Are the choices around your movement, exercise, nutrition, you know, for example, what you've always done. And so that's just who you are. You know, first, anybody goes, well, that's just who I am. That's just how we eat. Okay, then you're stuck and you're not going to get out of it. And so good luck with that. I wish you all the best because it's probably not going to end well. <laughs> because just because you grew up on it or just because your mom always cooked in canola or Crisco doesn't make it the best choice. But honestly, we can no longer put our head in the sand and say, because it's too confusing or because we don't know where to start, we're just going to do what we did yesterday or when her mom is dead, you know, what we did, you know, as children, um, you know, my mom died from this. And so therefore I'm probably going to die from this. It's just not true. Um, I've become a lifelong student. And so um, I always have, for starters, a great book and multiple podcasts and follow multiple respected physicians from all walks of education to learn more and then do more and better. My Instagram is laden with really good doctors and I can give you some of those, the people that I follow if you're interested to post. But so with food, there are two decisions. Well, what you to know, Pam, Pam yes. all they have to do on Instagram is go look at who you follow. Who I follow, yeah. And you start with DR, it'll be easy to find. You're exactly right. So um, most of them are uh, functional medicine physicians. I would say 80% of them have uh, medical degrees and then decided to practice functionally because they did not want, they wanted to heal people. And you can heal people with food, thinking, and movement. So with food, there are two decisions. One is what to eat. And two is how often. So how often matters? Most people who are 30 pounds plus overweight are insulin dependent. And Dr. Jason Fung, who wrote the obesity code, introduces intermittent fasting for weight management. He's a nephrologist. And um, I personally like an 18-6 eating window. That's how often. Meaning I don't eat for 18 hours and I do eat within six. So like many females, I have to shake that up a few days a week. Um, 16 8 I never eat with under a 14-hour fasting window. And then one hour, one day a week, I do a 24 hour fast. Why? Does that, is, am I fasting unhealthily? No. Dr. Will Cole calls it intuitive fasting. And the benefit is called, and it's a big word. So for, for all you people who are lay people and just starting, don't think I'm trying to be smart. I'm going to just tell you something that's really important. It's called autophagy, right? Autophagy. I think about housekeeping. Autophagy is when the vacuum, uh, vacuum cleaner comes in and it swoops up dust on the floor. Well, inside your body, autophagy is when a really good cell sees a little crummy cell over here and it goes, oh, I'm gonna eat you up and make me better. Now I'm a stronger cell. That's autophagy. And it only happens once you are fasted at 18 hours or beyond. Some people never get that cellular cleanup because they don't let themselves go from eating more than the eight hours that they sleep. And they eat when they wake up and they eat before they go to bed and they sleep seven or eight hours and they eat when they wake. So autophagy is never a benefit of your lifestyle. Cell, cellular cleanup can happen if you just give it a minute. And so you're like 18 hours not eating. Yeah. So I eat my first nutrition at 10 after my workout and I stop at four and I'm full. And I, I, I'll, I'll explain this part in a minute, but stopping eating a good three hours before you go to bed is a great habit for digestion and sleep. So for me, my last, last bite ever would be at six because I go to bed at nine. I prefer to stop at three or four. I just feel better. I sleep harder. I wait more rested. So that's a consideration for how often. Now, what to eat comes next. Most people eat too many carbs, bad flours, and too little protein. I'm most energetic on a primarily keto, meaning high fat, low carb, vegetarian choice. But you do have to invest in learning about food and the big five, calories, fat, protein, carbs and fiber. So most people agree that the Mediterranean way of eating uh, equals healthy cells and longevity. Blue zones locations have hard data on centurions based on this way of eating. It's easy to look up. It's easy to learn. It's not so easy to integrate and change. So now, you got to find I, what I, you're I want to just go back to something because Dr. Edwards talked briefly. She didn't, that wasn't her topic, but she did reference that the Mediterranean diet is, you know, one of the more superior eating plans for life. And I absolutely love Blue Zones. My son, who is a doctor, turned me on to Blue Zones several years ago. All you have to do is Google them. You can follow them on Instagram. I'm on their email list. And basically what Blue Zones did, they went to seven places around the world where people live the longest 
and the healthiest, and they found their common denominators. And it's really quite fascinating. They, it's always practical. They always share recipes. And it's just, it's just a, a really good, if you're trying to, and guys, we haven't talked about this on my podcast, but you become like the five people that you hang around. Okay, well, one of those people, quote, quote, you hang around is who you follow on social media. So what's coming into your feed, if what's in your feed, like in Pam's case, where she's following all these functional doctors and all these people, guess what's in her mind all the time is root causes. Here's how to fix something before it becomes a bigger problem. So this just kind of is all just falling right into place, Pam. Good point. Good point. Okay. I've got a list, but I'm going to, so I'm going to get to the list, but the bottom line to to what you're saying, Linda, is you got to find what your cells love and hate and be willing to make some changes, right? To do something different and to see something different. You've got to understand that I am not my mama's DNA. You're like, what? No. Okay. She's definitely a lay person. Genetics are 10% of the rest of your life. Environment and lifestyle are 90%. And epigenetics prove it. Uh, Epigenetics means you're not married to your DNA. You might unlock some bad DNA that you were given, but you can also lock it back up based on the food you eat, the beverages you drink, the sedentary or active lifestyle determine your emotions. What you eat and how you feel are so connected. When I start getting a little down or blue or a little irritated or agitated or anxious, I'm like, what did I eat? That's my first thought. Not what happened to me, what did somebody say? My first thought is, what did I eat? And I go backwards to go, oh man. And, and fix it, right? Because you can change it. You can change it pretty fast. You can change the way you feel based on food in 24 hours. In fact, if I have a big mess up, which I do, you're like, do you, did you eat any sugar at Christmas? I did. I did. Because it's not like handcuffs. I knew that I was going to have negative consequences from a few choices during the holiday season. But I also knew that a good 24-hour fast with either bone broth or even liquid Protein shakes would fix it because food alters things like anxiety, depression, perception, phobias, okay? So like any goal, three things. One, awareness and desire. I hope you've become more aware listening as a lay person, you know, just more aware. Number two, a decision to create change. And then number three, implementation of intelligent first steps. So for me, uh, the 90-day planner is a calendar and it's a date book, but more than that, it's a habit, key behavior Um, accountability because you can immediately act on knowledge that you have because when you learn more and do better and you track it like I use the 90-day planner I created the 90-day planner for me right Um, and but what it's about is creating habits so your first month of eating healthy and increased movement shouldn't be about weight loss your first month at the gym shouldn't be about putting on muscle your first month should be about one thing only building habits that form the foundation of your new lifestyle. So I'm gonna leave you guys with seven action steps that I'd take if I were starting fresh. Number one, set eating windows with a minimum of 12 hour fasting. So I stop eating at seven, I can't eat until seven. That's the minimum. For me, I like stopping to eat at six and then going to bed at nine, at least three hours for better digestion, better sleep. And so then that would mean that I could technically eat at six, but that's too early for me. I like working out on fasted because then my body will burn fat for fuel instead of carbs for fuel. So number one, set eating windows. This is going to be hard because your habits are hardwired and they're challenging to overcome. Number two, decide tomorrow today. What am I going to eat tomorrow? Decide today. Don't wait until tomorrow to decide because then you'll be grabbing for all the familiar things, right? So decide tomorrow what I'm going to eat tomorrow. Decide today. And then take Sunday to prep. If you, you know, I'll make up tuna fish. I'll hard boil six eggs. I'll do just a few things that give me some fast grabs. I'll measure out nuts. Just a few little things to give me a leg up for when, you know, you're hangry in that moment. You're like, "Ah, I got to get something now. And then you got it. Okay. Number three, eat only whole foods. I talked about that earlier. If it doesn't grow out of the ground, uh, fly in the air, swim in the ocean, have a mother, it's not a whole food. Um, Learn how to read labels. If you can't pronounce it, your liver can't process it. So uh, eat only whole foods, number three. Number four, start reading labels. They're tricky. Manufacturers lie with acceptable laws. What are not good for you are seed oils and sugar, you know, uh, it'll say uh, 
it'll say uh, safflower oil. Okay, well, that's a bad oil in a food. Any kind of seed oil is bad in food. And if it ends in low sucralose, you know, blah, 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 it makes it sound like it's not sugar. It's sugar. It's just not healthy. So look at that sugar um, uh, label reading. Uh, we were at, we were at a, a meeting together recently and there was tea on the table. I turned the tea around, 48 grams of sugar in a bottle of tea. I was like, what? People aren't reading this. And it was branded as a organic tea. I'm like, for crying out loud, if it has more than eight grams of sugar, it is not for you. And really eight is pushing it. Eight is what I would like to consume no more of during the day, just incidental. Number five, uh, make planning your week inclusive of your main meal, snacks, and workouts. So when you plan your week in your 90-day planner, um, include your main meals, your snacks, and your workouts, even if that's just walking five days a week. In college, I used to jump rope a thousand jump ropes in increments of a hundred. It was a great little workout, right? I can do that in the garage right now. I have a new jump rope and a mat out in the garage that I can do on winter days where for whatever reason I don't get to the gym. So number five is make planning your week inclusive, not just of your schedule, not just of your appointments, but of your main meals, your snacks, and your workouts. Then number six, write it out. I know, plan it, track it, stick it. And here's, here's my most simple thing for you to do. Pick five things to do for five days. Just five, not the rest of your life, not the rest of this month. Just pick five little things to do for five days. Pick up a little piece of paper, you know, a little tracking, put it in your 90 day planner. These are the five things I'm gonna do. Write them out at night, check them off the next day. The, the dopamine and serotonin boost from those, you know, checking that off is really big. So write it out, plan it out and stick it. Just pick five things for five days, start small. Big results start with small actions. And then if you like those things, then do those same five things for another week. And uh, a hashtag that I have is called process of accumulation. Hashtag process of accumulation. Nobody gets fat on one meal. Nobody gets fat on Christmas sugar desserts or Christmas cookies. It's the process of accumulation of our choices that create inflammation and extra body fat, which by the way, it's now starting to come out that COVID really hit the obese over any other comorbidity. My last one is number seven, establish accountability with a buddy, somebody else who's committed to the same healthy outcome. When you have a buddy and you have the same five things or five things that you're both going to be accountable on, you know, I did it, I did it, I did it. Um, when I first started the journey after Jerry died, I had a buddy and we texted each other breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You know, here's what I ate. What'd you eat? Here's what I ate. What'd you eat? Here are the numbers. What are the numbers? And that's how I learned about calories and fat and how my body would feel and played around. Do I do better on a higher carb diet or better on a higher fat diet? I do better on higher fat because I love fat. I love nuts and I love avocados and I love nut butters. And, you know, so for me, the keto vegetarian is more of a blue zones uh, type. They do eat more grains than I eat. And so I'm working on just playing around with that. But in a nutshell, Linda, that's my list. What do you think about that starting list? Is that is that simple enough? I love it. I love it. Set eating windows. Decide today what you're going to eat tomorrow. Eat only whole foods. If it doesn't fly, grow from the ground. I loved all that. Doesn't have a mama. You don't need to be eating it. Can't pronounce it. Okay. Start reading labels. Uh, make planning inclusive. Write it down. Track it. Uh, plan it. Track it. Stick it. And establish accountability. All right. Tell us about the planner where everyone can get one. And I have the eight and a half by 11, but it also comes smaller, correct? It does. It comes in a classic size six by eight, which was the original. And a friend of mine convinced me that other people needed more writing space. So thank you for, for that. <laughs> I, I love, um, what I love about it most is that I created it for me. It was never created as a tool to sell um, or even to share. I had done, taken every course there was, Linda, from, you know, Franklin Planner to Time, you know, managers. I mean, I've taken them all and I wanted something to include habits and key behaviors. So I designed it years ago and then just kept building on it. And then of course it became a tool that I share. What I love most is that I have to address my goals four times a year because it's only a 90 day planner. So every 90 days I have to come back and rewrite all my goals and review how I'm doing. So there's more of a check-in and honest accountability with myself. It's unique to the planning world, but I pray it'll be a a tool that blesses some of your watchers. Well, 
I have no doubt it will be a blessing to thousands of people. And I just want to take this opportunity, uh, Pam, just to tell you again, what a blessing you have been in my life to me and my family. Um, you know, I'm so glad that you're one of those five people that I keep in my head and, and how richer my life is because of you. So <laughs> cheers, my friend. To you, friend. Uh, cheers to you. All righty, guys, we're going to wrap this up. And of course, I never end an episode. I did notice last week that I did not talk to Mike at the end of Glenn's episode. So we have to make up for it today. Uh, uh, Mike Rowe, this is the quality of friend I have. I'm telling you, you need to come looking for me. I'm your soulmate. <laughs> I'm your soulmate. And these are the cool people I hang out with, with in my life. You guys, thank you all so very much. And it's time to wrap this show up and say goodbye, you all. And I'll see you next week. And hey, guys, guys, next week, we start a whole episode, a whole bunch of episodes on how to run a business from your home. So we'll have to have Pam back. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Linda. Have a great day, everybody.